I want my potty. <laughs> Nappies are yuck, said the little princess. There must be something better. The pot is the place, said the queen. <laughs> At first, the little princess thought the potty was worse. The potty's the place, said the queen. So, the little princess had to learn. Sometimes the little princess was a long way from the potty when she needed it most. Sometimes, the little princess played tricks on the potty. And sometimes, the potty played tricks on the little princess. Soon, the potty was fun. And the little princess loved it. Everybody said the little princess was clever and would grow up to be a wonderful queen. <laughs> the potty's the place, said the little princess proudly. You fit, you fit the, um, you, you fit it. One day, the little princess was playing at the top of the castle when... I want my potty! She cried. She wants her potty! Cried the maid. She wants her potty! Cried the king. <laughs> she wants her potty! Cried the cook. She wants her potty! Cried the gardener. She wants her potty! Cried the general. Ah! Uh, I know where it is. Cried the admiral. So the potty was taken as quickly as possible to the little princess. Just a little too late. I want a cat.
Jessie wanted a cat. All her friends had pets. Some of them had big pets. And some of them had little pets. Jessie felt that she was the only girl in the world with no pet. And Jessie wanted a cat. Her mum and dad always said, no, crawly, creepy, yowly things, they called them. So they kept giving Jessie toy cats instead. But Jessie wanted a real cat. Then Jessie planned the wonderful plan. She collected lots of fluffy white cloth some needles and cotton. Locked herself in her room. And she made herself a cat suit. Next, she took all of her proper clothes and buried them in the garden. I'm going to be the cat in this house, she purred. What on earth do you think you're doing, said Mum. I'm going to be like this until I get a cat, said Jessie. And if I don't get a cat, then I'm going to be like this forever. On Monday, Jessie went to school. <laughs> when the teacher saw her cat suit, he shouted so loudly, she jumped up on top of the blackboard and wouldn't come down, even for a saucer of milk. On Tuesday, Jessie went to a restaurant. Cats don't sit at tables, said Jessie. Even in posh places. Milk and trout, she said to the waiter. And please don't cook the trout. May it be served down here? Certainly, madam, said the waiter. began to smell of fish. When it was time for bath and bed, Dad went to catch Jessie. Now you'll have to take that silly suit off, he grinned. No, I won't, said Jessie. Not until I get a cat. And Jessie curled up on her bedroom floor. In the middle of the night, Mum and Dad were roused by a horrible noise. It was like a million pigs falling downstairs and the neighbours banging on the front door. It was Jessie on the garden wall. I want a cat! She was howling. <coughs> Give her a cat, complained Mr Biggs from next door. Give her a cat, complained Mr Figs. Shouldn't be allowed. Complained Mrs. Figs. Stop that finishing noise. We're trying to get some kick out here. Some of us have got to get on in the morning. You're stopping. Give her a cat, complained Mum. 
So early next morning, Dad went down to the pet shop and chose a cat. He took it to Jessie's door and knocked. Jessie, he called. I've got a surprise for you. Whoa, whoa, said Jessie. I want... Jezebel. Jezebel was perfect in every way. She was so perfect, she was called Super Duper Jezebel. When other children came out of school, they were sometimes untidy. But Jezebel was always super duper neat. Jezebel always kept her room tidy. And she always put her things back in their boxes. And she cleaned up after the cat. to play with her friends. Jezebel always kept clean. She still liked to have two baths every day. Always wrote her thank you letters in neat writing without being reminded. And at school, she was best at everything. When she had spots, she always took her medicine and said, thank you. She could do up buttons and tie real bows on her lace-ups. Jezebel always ate up her meals. She always put her knife and fork together and she never picked her nose. If you do that, you'll get a long, fat nose like a carrot. I've got a pretty nose. Jezebel told other children not to do things. Sucking your thumb makes your teeth stick out. I never do that, and I've got super teeth. Super duper. minister heard about Jezebel, she sent a special medal for being good. And a special statue of Jezebel was put up in the park to remind everybody else to try to be perfect. She even went on television in a special show to talk about herself and her medal and the cup she'd won for being polite, being spotless, being helpful, being best at sums, reading poetry and writing. At school, 
Super Duper Jezebel wouldn't do anything wrong like the other noisy children who weren't perfect. Come on, Jezebel! A crocodile has escaped from the zoo! You mustn't run. It's against the rules. I always walk nicely. If you run, your socks will come down. See? Oscar got the blame. This is Oscar. And this is Oscar's friend, Billy. Oscar's mum and dad think Oscar made Billy up. Whenever Oscar talked about Billy, his mum and dad said, don't be silly. I'm sick and tired of you talking about Billy all the time. But Oscar and Billy were the best of friends. Day and night. Sometimes, Oscar let Billy have some of his dinner. Oscar, this really has to stop. But then, had to eat it all himself. When Billy left little bits of mud around the house... Oh, Oscar, how many more times? How long is this going to continue? Oscar got the blame. Now go away and stop talking about Billy, please. Thank you. When Billy dressed the dog in Dad's things... Oscar! Oscar got the blame. When Billy put frogs in Granny's slippers... <laughs> Oscar got the blame. Oscar! When Billy made breakfast... Oscar, how many more times have I told you? Just come here, come here, get away from the breakfast things! I told you never to touch my eggs! Don't go near the fridge ever again, you understand? Oscar got the blame. When Billy washed the cat. Oscar got the blame. This is the first and last time you will wash the cat. Cats do not like water. Now go and dry the cat, would you please? Little fluff dry with the hair dryer and the towel. And put the cat back in the basket. And when Billy left the bathroom taps running... Oscar got the blame. Right, that's it, Oscar. I've had enough. Up to your room, and you're not having a story tonight. You can forget all about it. I don't want to hear any more nonsense. Do you understand? And was sent to bed without a story. It's not fair, said Oscar. Nobody believes in my friend Billy. <laughs> they never do, said Billy. Ha, 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 ha,
to get you. Deep in another galaxy. A spaceship rushed towards a tiny, peaceful planet. It landed and out jumped a loathsome monster. I'm coming to get you, it howled. The monster crushed all the gentle banana people. It smashed their statues. scattered their books. It chewed up the mountains. And drank the oceans. It had the jellyfish for afters. Lovely. It gobbled up the whole planet. Except for the middle, which was too hot, and the ends, which were too cold. <laughs> Still hungry, the monster flew off in its spaceship, nibbling small stars on the way. <laughs> It had seen a pretty blue planet called Earth. The monster found little Tommy Brown on its radar. I'm coming to get you, it roared. In a deep, dark cave. It was bedtime. And Tommy was listening to a story all about scary monsters. Slimy monster. And this was possibly the most frightening monster that anyone had ever seen. The spaceship neared Earth. And the monster found out where Tommy lived. It circled the town, looking for the right house. As Tommy crept up to bed, he checked every stair for monsters. He looked in every place they could hide. Once, he thought he heard a bump outside his window. The monster hid behind a rock and waited for the dawn. I'm coming to get you, it hissed. 
In the daylight, Tommy forgot all about monsters, and he set off happily for school. But then, with a terrible roar, the monster pounced. Dad, said Bernard. Not now, Bernard, ah! Ah! Mm, said his father. <laughs> Hello, Mum, said Bernard. Not now, Bernard, said his mother. There's a monster in the garden, and it's going to eat me, said Bernard. Not now, Bernard, said his mother. Bernard went into the garden. Hello, monster, he said to the monster. The monster ate Bernard up. Every bit. Then the monster went indoors. behind Bernard's mother. Not now, Bernard, said Bernard's mother. The monster bit Bernard's father. Not now, Bernard, said Bernard's father. Your dinner's ready, said Bernard's mother. She put the dinner in front of the television. She comes thrown in. Here's the picture. The monster ate the dinner. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got the ball, I got the ball. Then it watched the television. Oh, it. I got it, I got it. No, it's me, I got it, I got it. Let me pick it up. Then it read one of Bernard's comics. <laughs> mm. 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 Ooh. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and broke one of his toys. Go to bed, I've taken up your milk, called Bernard's mother. The monster went upstairs. But I'm a monster, said the monster. Not now, Bernard, said Bernard's mother. There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young. Elephants old. Elephants tall or fat or thin. Elephants like this, that, or the other. All different, but all happy, and all the same colour. All, that is, except Elmer. Elmer was different. Elmer was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. Elmer was not elephant colour. <laughs> it was Elmer who kept the elephants happy. Sometimes he joked with the other elephants. Sometimes they joked with him. But if there was even a little smile, it was usually Elmer who started it. <laughs> One night, Elmer couldn't sleep for thinking. And the thing that he was thinking was that he was tired of being different. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. In the morning, before the others were really awake, Elmer slipped quietly away, unnoticed. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. They always said, Good morning, Elmer. Each time, Elmer smiled and said, Good morning. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush. A large bush covered with berries. A large bush covered with elephant-coloured berries. <laughs> 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 
Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it and shook it so that the berries fell on the ground. Once the ground was covered in berries, Elmer lay down and rolled over and over, this way and that way, and back again. Then he picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over, covering himself with berry juice until there wasn't any sign of any yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white. When he'd finished, Elmer looked like any other elephant. After that, Elmer set off back to the herd. On the way, he passed the other animals again. This time, each one said to him, Good morning, elephant. And each time, Elmer smiled and said, Good morning, pleased that he wasn't recognised. When Elmer rejoined the other elephants, they were all standing quietly. None of them noticed Elmer as he worked his way to the middle of the herd. After a while, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old bright sky, same old rain cloud that came over from time to time. And lastly, same old elephants. Elmer looked at them. The elephants were standing absolutely still. Elmer had never seen him so serious before. The more he looked at the serious, silent, still, standing elephants, the more he wanted to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk, and at the top of his voice, he shouted, <coughs> The elephants jumped and fell always in surprise. Oh, my gosh and golly, they said. <laughs> then saw Elmer, helpless with laughter. Elmer, they said. It must be Elmer. <laughs> then the other elephants laughed too, as they had never laughed before. As they laughed, the rain cloud burst. And when the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. The elephants still laughed as Elmer was washed back to normal. Oh, Elmer! <laughs> gasped an old elephant. Oh, you've played some good jokes, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. <laughs> it didn't take you long to show your true colours, eh? <laughs> we must celebrate this day every year, said another. This will be Elmer's day. All elephants must decorate themselves, and Elmer will decorate himself elephant colour. <laughs> that is exactly what the elephants do. On one day a year, they decorate themselves and parade. On that day, if you happen to see an elephant, ordinary elephant colour, you will know it must be Elmer.
the sad story of Veronica who played the violin. Veronica played the violin. At first, she wasn't very good. In fact, she was awful. Her first teacher left for China. Her second teacher, Mrs. Leone, was deaf. <laughs> Mrs. Leone read sad stories and said, oh, Very nice, dear. You just need to practice a lot. Veronica did practice a lot because she was determined. <laughs> it was terrible for the neighbours. She is determined, they moaned. The practice made Veronica play better, so she practised all the time. She is getting better, the neighbours wailed, but she practises all the time. By the time her next birthday came, Veronica could play really beautifully. For her birthday, the whole family went on a picnic. After tea, Veronica played the violin. It was her first concert. was so beautiful that everyone cried into their fizzy drinks. <laughs> Not long after that, Veronica's headmaster asked her why she never did any homework. I have to practice the violin, said Veronica and showed him. Sad, said the headmaster. You must play at the school concert. Veronica played. was her second concert. <laughs> At the concert was a famous music man. The next day, he chased Veronica from school, shouting that he would make her rich and famous. Thing I've ever heard in my life. Please sign your name on the dotted line. You're fantastic. Please don't run away. Veronica left school to become a star. 
soon her records were being played everywhere. It seemed as if she could make the whole world cry. Veronica's most successful concert ended with a flood. In fact, there was a storm at the time, but Veronica and her music were given all the credit. Then one day Veronica said, Enough! All I've ever done is play the violin. I want adventure. I'm off to the deepest, darkest jungle. Please don't go. Oh, no, no, please, no! Sobbed the music men. Her mother wept too. You'll be eaten alive! She cried. Mothers always know best. Don't worry, my violin can calm the fiercest beast, smiled Veronica. That afternoon, she went to the safari park to prove it. Because she was famous, the guards let her try. To their amazement, the lions just lay down and wept. Veronica had proved her point. On the following day, her parents drove her to the ship. They felt very sad as they waved her goodbye. Veronica thought the voyage wonderful. And at night she played beautifully sad music to the moon. The ship's pumps had to keep going all the time. When the ship landed, the men in uniform told Veronica, You can't go into the jungle alone. You'll have to go with these fearless hunters or you'll be eaten alive. OK, said Veronica. For days, Veronica and the fearless hunters marched through the jungle. Not so very exciting, thought Veronica. She never once played her violin. Then one afternoon, as they crossed a clearing, a tiger, a leopard, and a lion appeared at the same time. At once, the fearless hunters ran away, leaving Veronica alone. Veronica wasn't at all worried. Calmly, she took out her violin and began to play. The animals stopped and listened, but they didn't cry. After days of not playing, the music sounded different. It was still beautiful, but now it was happy. Animals began to dance, and other animals arrived and joined in. Soon the clearing was full of dancing animals. Great, thought Veronica. Enough of all that crying. When I get back, the streets will be full of happy, dancing people. At that moment, from out of the jungle sprang an old lion. With one giant bite, he ate Veronica. She never even knew what had happened. What have you done? cried the animals. That was the most beautiful music we've ever heard. The old lion put his paw behind his ear and said, What? All of which explains why the streets aren't full of happy, dancing people. Thank you.
The hill and the rock. Mr and Mrs Quest lived in a little house on the very top of a hill, the only hill in that part of the country. Because it was the only hill, there were lots of visitors. Oh, look over there, look, you can see them. The views were wonderful. You can see for miles and miles and miles. Oh, oh it's absolutely Getting to the top of the hill was a bit hard for the visitors. But going home was easy. Everyone said it was a perfect place to live. No, that was marvellous. Thank you. No, it was well worth it. Yes, bit of a trek up, you know, but I hope we enjoyed it, really. Thank you. It would be perfect, said Mrs Quest to her husband. If it wasn't for the rock. The rock stood at the back of the house and blocked half of the view from the kitchen window. It is perfect, said Mr Quest. Half of our view is better than the whole of anyone else's view. Besides, said Mr Quest, I can climb to the top of the rock and see even further. But Mrs Quest kept on about the rock. You can go to work, but I have to stay and look at that rock. Or, I spend a lot of time in that kitchen. And often just, it's a pity about the rock. Eventually, one night, Mr Quest said, I'll see about it tomorrow. And Mrs Quest was happy. The next day, Mr Quest dug away the ground outside the rock. Then he pushed it from the other side. The rock rolled all the way to the bottom of the hill. Hurrah! cheered Mr Quest. Mrs Quest was delighted now she had a full view from the kitchen window. That night, she said, what's that funny hissing sound? Her husband, who was tired out from his hard work, was already fast asleep. The following night, it was Mr Quest who said, what's that funny hissing sound? I don't know, said Mrs Quest, but I heard it last night as well. The day after that, Mr Quest thought it seemed easier going home from work. When he arrived home, he found his wife crying. The hill is going down, she sobbed. The hissing is the air in the hill escaping from the hole where the rock was. <laughs> sure enough, day after day, Night after night, the hill went down until one day it was gone altogether. Now we're just the same as everyone else, said Mr Quest. Well, I don't know what the fuss what was mean? in. Visitors mean? still came out of curiosity, but they didn't stay long. There was nothing to see. Nice day, they would say, and go on their way. Poor Mrs Quest. Without the hill, there wasn't any view. Except from the kitchen window, where she could still see the rock in the distance. And the hissing still did not stop. Day and night, Night and day, the house still kept going down until it was at the bottom of a valley. Wow. 
Visitors came, for after all, it was the only valley in that part of the country, and it was easy to get there. They didn't stay long. The side of a valley isn't much of a view, and it was hard work to go home. <gasps> One night, a new noise frightened Mr. and Mrs. Quest. A terrible rumbling and a crash. Oh, Mr. Quest peeked out from under the bedclothes and then went to see what was happening. In the dark, he could not see a thing. He bolted the door, hurried back to bed and hid under the covers again. In the morning, Mr. Quest looked carefully outside. It's the rock! He shouted to Mrs. Quest. It's rolled down the valley and back into the hole! Oh, no! It's worse than before, said Mrs. Quest. Now it covers the whole of the kitchen window. Never mind, said Mr. Quest. I have an idea. For the rest of the day, he worked at the back of the rock. When he had finished, he had painted a picture on the rock. Now at least the kitchen has a view, he said. Mrs. Quest was pleased. And the hissing has stopped, she said. Now that the air couldn't escape, the house started to rise again. Day and night, the valley gradually disappeared. The house continued to rise until finally the hill was back in its old place. Once again, the visitors began to trek up the only hill in that part of the country. they said to Mrs. Quest. It's a perfect place to live with such wonderful views. Perfect, agreed Mrs. Quest. And my favourite view is the one from the kitchen window. Come and see. Once was a bird who didn't have a name. He had a very large beak and was all black, except for the whites of his eyes. All the other creatures who had names laughed at him. This made him very unhappy. 
<laughs> One day, he decided to leave them all and go to seek his fortune. He went over the mountain. Then across the river. Until he came to a hot, dusty place where everybody worked. This made him want to work as well. So he went to see a man sitting behind a large desk who told him what to try. At first, he tried chopping wood, but his beak was so large that it always got in the way. Next, he tried office work, but he felt silly in a bowler hat. Finally, he tried carrying things. He enjoyed doing this and was very good at it. Most of the time, he carried cans. Because of his long beak, he could carry two at once. The others called him Toucan, as they could only carry one. He was happy. At last, he had a name. One day, when Toucan was carrying paint, instead of being content with two, he tried to carry three cans. Going down some steps, he fell and ended up with orange, red and white paint all over him. Although he scrubbed and scrubbed, he could not get the paint off. He felt he was a failure. And one morning, before the city was awake, he left for home. He went back across the river. Then back over the mountain. When at last he arrived home, none of the creatures recognized him in his fine new feathers. When they asked his name, he said it was Toucan. They spelled it T-O-U-C-A-N. So he decided to keep it that way. Toucan explained who he was and told them about his adventures. When they heard the story, they all laughed again. <laughs> but this time, Toucan laughed with them. Thank you.